Hey YouTube, it's Shaker here, and we're bringing you another one. So we are doing. No, I should I should say it like this. So <laughs> let me say this: <clears throat> If you like movies, TV shows, if you're trying to be a filmmaker, animator, anything to do with the movie realm, and you're not watching behind the trailer, shame on you. That's it. Actually, I should shut the whole thing down for this one. Real quick before we get started, I got a coloring book so that everybody knows I got a coloring book for all ages. Jcut.com is ready to order. You can order right now. Go ahead and get yourself. Get yourself. Everybody else don't have. I also have a baby book. It's called A is for Artists. Ooh. A is for Artists is a new baby book, but I ain't got no money to get the book. So if you want to help me get the book, go to jcut.com right now and pre-order. It's called A is for Artists. What do you want to be when you grow up? And literally every page is a different letter. H is for hairdresser. G is for gardener. M is for mechanic. N is for nurse. So every letter is a different job and it's a very squishy, Good book. Get yourself a book. If you're not watching Beyond the Trailer, why? What, what are you watching then? Grace gives me everything. First of all, I enjoy, you know, uh, so much. First of all, go check out Grace, okay, on Beyond the Trailer. It's her YouTube channel um, where she goes beyond the trailer. She either do trailer reviews, like she'll watch a trailer and review it and do a breakdown and all that stuff, which is good. Um, she also does, like, um, movie math on Sundays uh, where she kind of explains, like, the math side of it, like what's happening in the money, what's going on in the money world of it, of it all. Um, she'll go live and just kind of talk about like the topics of the week or the day or the hot topic of the month when it comes to movies like she is on that you know she has her sources she's really good she's good at two things one explaining her opinion about a movie but also kind of keeping it kind of biased in a sense of like all right this is how I feel this is what I like but I also understand why you like that or I also understand why the world would enjoy this or vice versa. Or I like it, but I see why everyone else doesn't. Like, I love that about her. Um, I also like the fact that she will... She knows how to explain a movie without spoiling. Which is not easy. So she'll tell you, like, this is a non-spoil review. We're going to review the whole thing, but we're not going to spoil it. Or she'll say, this is a spoil review. So... You know what I mean? So she's really good at, like doing this to a movie which is not easy for everyone to do and i appreciate that so you should be watching her and this is not sponsored i'm just telling you to go watch, go watch her so i drew her i drew her some time ago uh and she did repost on her twitter which was really nice um but i think it was just the artwork this is before reels was forced upon us tiktok was forced upon us um so i'm gonna post it now hopefully she sees it again and reposts uh, the reel. I don't know if she will or not. But anyway, here's the breakdown. So before we get started, don't forget to like, subscribe, push that notification button because we're going to keep bringing this stuff to you. I don't know why I'm so aggressive today. Let's get started. So, so. Um, and literally every time she starts a show, she doesn't say so every time, but I say so every time I start her anything. Oh, another thing I like about her that I want to incorporate. Actually, I learned a lot about her, but one is she doesn't edit her videos. She just speaks, but she has years of experience speaking like pretty fluently. And that doesn't mean she doesn't make mistakes or stutter and things like that, but she just can talk without feeling like I got to edit out my mistakes. And I love that about her. Another thing I love is that she treats her YouTube audience like people, you know, like anyway, which is not easy to do. And I think it does come with growth 
in your YouTube channel, but she can easily say, remember last time? Or she can pick up the conversation like, so like I was saying, like she can start like that because we all know what you were talking about yesterday or the week before or a month before, and now you're bringing us up to speed. So I love that. Anyway, back to the sketch. Obviously, this is an old sketch uh, because <laughs> look at the detail. So the artwork is not bad, but remember I drew this, I'm just going to say 2019 is 2022. That's like what? 20, 21, 22 basically four years so and that's if it was 19 it might have been 18 i just can't remember um anyway so there's a lot of things that i do now that i don't do anymore um i mean things i do now that i didn't do then um and but there's some things here that are still really cool i do think i got her likeness pretty well not perfectly but pretty well like well enough for you to know it's her uh but maybe not like right on the right on the nail um and you can, I know this is old method just from how I started inking. Cause now if this was today, I would have silhouetted her whole, whole body with a darker, I mean, not darker, a thicker brush and then went and then filled that whole silhouette in with gray and then went in and did these more detailed inking parts. Um, because I found that later on, cause no matter what, I'm going to fill it in with gray. And if you fill in with gray, then I can use all the other layers to clip inside of that gray and then color. But so no matter what, I'm going to do that. But if I do, and it doesn't have to be gray. I just feel gray neutralizes everything. But um, here, because I'm, but when it's, when I do the silhouette, I can use a reference and procreate and then just literally color pick it. But when I don't do that, now I have to go in and make a silhouette of gray underneath the line and then fill it in. It's just causing more trouble. So it's better to just do the silhouette first of a black ink. And it just looks cleaner and more graphic anyway. But I didn't really recognize that at that time. I, what was the piece that when I first, first did that? What piece was that? I can't remember. I'm going to stumble upon it. But there's a specific piece that I first did that, and I was like, oh, this I like this method. This is better. Anyway, so um, also a thing I didn't, that I do, that I don't do much now, which is bittersweet, is I used to put the pictures in there so I can, like, see the reference right there on the same page. But um, Apple has a, a split screen where you can just put the image inside of your photos and just split the screen but now you won't see it in the in the thing and i kind of like that i can see it right now so uh, it's bittersweet anyway um went in did all the base color and then obviously she has these highlights or like the roots are darker and then you got the highlights so um I, after i did the base like blonde color then i went in with a more brownish color and just kind of airbrush certain areas that are closer to the roots of her uh of her skull and then um kind of erased a little bit to get a little bit more of that highlight. And then obviously when I go back later, another thing I used to do, which you could see here is I used to add highlight. No, a lighter color of the skin. Oh, it's hard to explain it, but anyway, you can see it on the nose and you see, I started to do it on the cheek and it was doing too much. I, uh, I should bring it back, but Sometimes it looks weird. Sometimes it works. Here it worked okay, but sometimes it doesn't work. Anyway, um, and then I went and added in, um, and now I'm going in and adding the shading. And I'm using like a blue shady shading, and it's not bad, but it's making the hair look kind of green. Um, I should have I should have used the blue for the body and then used like a more deeper reddish color for shading for the hair and head so realistically whatever the lighting is is probably going to be the same everywhere but like your skin is usually more red than like obviously more red than her suit is so that red could have bounced into the shading a little bit more and then made the hair and then the hair is also leaning red than it is blue so it just would have been better to have a deeper like burgundy base for the shading instead of that blue because it makes the hair look a little weird but the highlights bring it forward later and you don't notice it but knowing now i would have went a different route because i don't like that green um 
I love how I did the sparkles. And that's so easy. You just do... There's a... Well, at that time, I would just use the dot. But actually, there's a brush, like a stippling brush. And you literally just use a darker color, stipple it in, and then... For the shading, and then do the same thing for the highlights. It's pretty simple. Um, so I'm still going in with the shadows. Really just going in, adding in that detail. And now I'm going in with the highlights. Yes. So I went with a white highlight everywhere or just for this area? Because I can see it on the arm. Oh, I guess I went everywhere with it. Oh, I wish I would have pushed the hair more. The hair's not pushed to where I would push it now. It's not It's not giving. It's not giving what it's supposed to give. <laughs> it's just not. It's okay though. I like the the style, the ain't the way the hair looks, but the coloring is not it's not all the way there. It's not all the way there. But anyway, it's a cool drawing. It's a cool drawing. Uh, oh, I did do some rim lighting. That helps. The rim lighting definitely helps. So on the left, you can see I'm adding in like a teal rim. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, like I said, if you're not watching her, even if you're not into like creating movies, but you just like watching movies. She is a really good insight on how to look at film, um, how to, you know, it's not just a story. That's important, but she talks about all the attributes, all the things, and it's not just the, the thing that we all want to enjoy, which is the movie itself, but there's a whole business behind it, and even though we don't want to hear that side because it kind of takes away the magic of the film, but it's that's what's happening. So she has to bring in that side of it and how that affects the movie itself. So anyway, definitely check her out. Don't forget, let me pull it out. I have the baby book, A is for Artists. It's an ABC book. It's ready for pre-order and the pre-orders will help me get the actual thing out to the people. And I'm very excited about it. So if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, push that notification button because we're going to keep bringing this stuff to you. <laughs> That's it. Go watch her. Go watch me on the trailer. Uh, what are you doing? I know you're not about to leave. It's mad buttons down there. You ain't pushing one of them. You better subscribe to my channel. See you soon. Yeah.